Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> so good to gather together for worship celebrating 100 years of God's amazing grace on St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church. Special thank you to everyone participating in the worship service today. Thank you to Pastor Van Evenoven who's come back and he'll be giving our sermon today, a previous pastor here. Thanks to our orchestra, our band, our choir, everybody helping out with the service today. To God be the glory. Sometime during the service, please take out that little blue connection card inside of the, the extra large worship folder and fill that out, and you can pass that in during the offering. We would love to have a record of, of your visit and who is here worshiping with us today. Uh, so thankful for, for God and his amazing grace. The first hymn that, we'll get, that we're going to sing is a special hymn that was, that was um, written using the tune of Thy Strong Word with kind of a reformation or a, uh, an anniversary theme to it. Note that we'll stand between verses uh, 2 and 3 so that for verses, or, but, yeah, so that for verses 3 and 4 we'll be standing as the, the cross processes to the front. Everything is printed inside of your worship folder and up on the screen behind me. God be with you as we worship together.
The beginning of our service starts out with an invocation and confession of sins that some of you may remember well from the Lutheran hymnal from 1941 that was used here at St. Paul's until about 1993. That is when Pastor Hazi wasn't using his special order of service where it was just printed and stuck into the backside or the, the opening cover of the hymnal to have a really short, concise order of service. We worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Church, for 100 years you have blessed this congregation of believers and united us together in faith and mission with fellow believers throughout our synod. Increase our faith, knit us together in the bonds of love, and make our fellowship an example to all people. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the Word of God. Have we been a congregation here for 100 years because of our own faithfulness or our own worthiness? No, <laughs> but because of God's faithfulness and God's grace. Our first lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 7, beginning with the sixth verse. You are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than all the other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord, your God, is God, and he is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. The word of God. We continue by hearing the anthem, I will sing of thy great mercy. Our second lesson chosen for this anniversary weekend is Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with the 19th verse. As we think about 100 years of St. Paul's history, 100 years of grace, 
Well, one thing that we'll often think about are the different church buildings and where they were located and where we worshiped and when the upgrades happened and when we paid off our mortgage and those kinds of things. But this reminds us that first and foremost, when the scriptures talk about the church, it's not talking about a building. It's talking about people called out of darkness into light, called to be the very body of Christ. And that's what we see in Ephesians chapter 2. This is also one of the texts that was used for inspiration for our special anniversary anthem, Once Foreigners to the Covenant, that will be sung in just a moment. So Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse 19. You are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is God's word. We hear the 100th anniversary anthem, Once Foreigners to the Covenant. This anthem was commissioned by St. Paul's for this day. This is the world premiere of this song, um, and it was written by, by Tony Cordes. Thank you all for giving glory to God. <coughs>
Well, glory be to God. <laughs> Thank you for this offering of praise to our Lord Jesus. Please stand for the gospel. for today is recorded in Matthew chapter 7, beginning with the 24th verse. Why have Christians gathered here for the last 100 years? So that God could build them, so that God could build us up on a solid foundation of Christ and his word, so that we can hear his word and put it into practice. The Gospel according to Matthew. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. The gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day. Please note the different <coughs> verses. It begins with, Verse 1, everyone singing, and then we have men, women, and a soloist throughout the song.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from him who is, from him who was, and from him who still is to come, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation today from the Old Testament book of Joshua, chapter 4, reading verses 19 through 24. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, In the future, when your descendants ask their parents, What do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. So far, the words of our text. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, our Savior, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to be here and worship with you once again. I'm I'm honored to be here this day, to be able to encourage you with God's word at this very special point in your congregational history. It's great to be back and to see so many familiar faces. I admit the names are not coming quite as quickly as the faces, but It's also great to see so many new faces since the time that I served here. God has certainly blessed your ministry. I'm thankful to be part of today and pray that God blesses his word among us. You know, I wonder what what happened to Kodak. Remember Kodak? Some of you might never have even heard of that company. But 40 years ago, they were at the top of the film and camera industry. Did you know Kodak developed the first digital camera in 1975? It's pretty incredible. The problem is they sat on that information because they didn't quite understand who they were and what they were about. They thought they were about film and processing and didn't really understand they were all about capturing people's memories. And in 2012, they filed bankruptcy. They got stuck glorying in the the successes of their past, lost sight of who they were and what they're all about, and now they are no more. Or what about Blockbuster Video? They too were at the top of their industry at one time. They opened their first video rental store as the the store with the largest selection of titles, 6,500. That was pretty innovative in 1985. By 1990, they had 1,000 stores. By 2005, 6,000 stores, and yet they filed for bankruptcy in 2010. They, too, thought they were all about videotapes and DVDs and lost sight of the fact they were really about providing entertainment for people. They gloried in their past. They failed to adapt to the environment around them, and now they are no more. I think those are important thoughts to think about as you gather to celebrate 100 years of God's grace. It's easy to lose sight of who you are and and to forget what you're all about if you spend all your time glorying in the present and looking in the rearview mirror of the past. I remember my driving instructor emphasizing many years ago that you're not going to get anywhere if you spend all your time looking in the rearview mirror. All you're going to do is crash. Now, you spent a lot of your anniversary year looking back to the past, and and that's a good thing. It's good and right to look back to the past and, and count the blessings God has bestowed on you. It's right to give thanks to God for the blessings he's chosen to give you over the last hundred years through faithful servants who served you like Hazi and Engelbrecht and Nass and Reimers and Liggett and Wong and the like. 
It's good to be reminded of the sacrifices your founding families made to establish this congregation. And the tireless sacrifices your lay leaders gave as they worked to carry out this ministry over the years. It's good. It's good to thank God for the way that your families have been touched through the, through the various ministries carried out here. Pioneers. Jesus Loves Me Learning Center. Jesus Cares. Campus Ministry. Risen Savior and the like. All of this is good and right to take stock of blessings and to give thanks to God. But the truth is your celebration ends today. And if all of you that you've done during this time is look back to the past, it doesn't help you see where you're going in the future. You don't want to be stuck glorying in the past and lose sight of who you are and what you're all about. You are the church. Those bought with the precious blood of Christ our Savior. Made dear children of God through faith worked by the Holy Spirit. You are the church. Those tasked with the mission of going out into this world to make disciples for Jesus. By proclaiming the truth of his word. To nurture those who already know him and to reach out to those who don't. The gospel of Jesus will never change. It, it has not changed in the last 100 years. The last 2,000 years, it will not change going forward in the future. The mission God gave to his church will not change. Your mission today is the same as it was 100 years ago, 2,000 years ago, and it will not change going forward into the future. But the culture and the climate into which that message is preached, has changed. It does change. I would argue it's ever-changing. And so it is essential for God's people to be alert to the opportunities before them and ready to adapt the way they preach that message so that they can effectively communicate it to the people they serve. So my question for you today is simple. Where will you go from here? This congregation is a, a storied congregation full of challenges in the past God has seen you through and full of blessings that he has generously poured out on you. But the truth is, as you look to the future, the, the slate is blank. There are a myriad of, of, of opportunities just waiting for you to, to, to reach as you proclaim the message of Jesus, more importantly, there are people right in this community, in this city, in your neighborhood, some of you in your own families, who need to hear the life-saving gospel message of Jesus. There are people that you know whom God has elected to be his people who need to know about the forgiveness of sins and the certainty of eternal life that comes through Jesus our Lord. And here's the really cool thing. You are the people God brought together at this place, at this time, to bring that gospel message to them. It's good to look back to the past, but to do so always with an eye on the future. It's good for each one of you to ask that question, what part will I play in carrying that gospel ministry forward as we move into the next 100 years. The question is easy. Where will you go from here? Now it's interesting to me in scripture. Whenever God set up landmarks or memorials. For his people to remember the past. It was always with an eye to the future. In our text. As Joshua set up this memorial of 12 stones at Gilgal. To help the people remember what God had done. In bringing them across the Jordan. He did so with his thought on the future. Listen to what he said. He said, in the future, when your descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them. Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. 
Well, they certainly were to look back and remember what God had done. The focus here is on teaching future generations about what God had done for them. God didn't want Israel sitting there on the banks of the Jordan and basking in the glory what he had done for them. He had work for them to do. He wanted them to be active going forward and teaching their descendants what God had done, how he had used that power to provide for them in the past. And he did that to give them confidence he would continue to do the same for them in the future. You see, really, this crossing of the Jordan wasn't the end for the people of Israel. Their work was just beginning. It had been 40 years since they left the land of Egypt. And their journey across the desert had been long and arduous. They had encountered many nations that were larger than them and more powerful. They traveled through a wilderness lacking food, and water. And now God had finally brought them across the Jordan River and into the land that he had promised to their forefathers. The temptation for them would be to take that deep breath and let off the gas and say, whew, we finally made it. But the work was just beginning. They still had to conquer the land and establish their cities. They still had to divide the land among the 12 tribes of Israel and and settle it. That wouldn't be easy. You remember the report the 12 spies brought back when they scouted out the land 40 years earlier. They said, the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. They couldn't just sit back and rest on their laurels. They needed to keep moving forward to carry out the work God had for them to do, they would still come on nations that were larger and more powerful than them, and they would be tempted to forget God's promises and be afraid. There are times that the situation would look very bleak, and they would be tempted to to doubt God's promises and lose hope. The work would be hard and difficult. They would become tired and weary and burdened, and the temptation was to lose heart. But God promised to bless their work. He promised to give them this land, to conquer the peoples. And so he set up this memorial for them to remember how God had used his power in love to protect them in the past, to give them confidence he would continue to do the same as they went forward into the future. They looked back to the past with their eye on the future. I I see this anniversary service today serving much the same purpose. Today, we're not focused on the past. Yes, we remember the great blessings that God has given us, that he's blessed you with. But we do so with an eye on the future. We do this with our eyes cast on that mission that God has set before us to teach future generations what God has done for them. See, the temptation for you today is to say, whew, we made it. There was a lot of work, a lot of effort put into this last year. You've listened to your musicians and all the the effort and work that they've put into preparing for today and and, and, and the work with the dinner, and it's tempting to just, after today, let out a big sigh and go, we made it. <sighs> That's not what we're celebrating today. The truth is, today is really nothing more than a pit stop along the way. A time for us to, to re- be refreshed, renewed, re-energized, to pick this banner up and continue moving forward into the future. See, one of the things we remember as we look back to the past is that the church is not just a place you come to once a week for most of the year, except during Advent and Lent when you come twice and holidays when you come more than that. The church is a living organism where God's people are actively using God's word to nurture those who believe and to reach out to the lost. That's not just who your pastors are. 
or your teachers are, or your lay leaders are. That's who every one of you are. You are the church. You are the ones God brought out of the darkness of sin into his wonderful light so that you can declare his praises to the world. You are the holy nation, the royal priesthood, the people belonging to God, equipped and tasked to go make disciples for Jesus. How easy it is for us to lose sight of that. How easy it is for us to to sit back and rest on our laurels and glory in the successes God brought us in the past. How easy it is for us to become comfortable with what we have and sit back and let others do the work for us. How easy it is to just see this as a place for us to be served rather than a place for us to serve. How easy it is to use excuses why we can't be involved in that work. Excuses like, I don't know what to say. I'm not equipped for that. I've got plenty of other things to do. Friends, that doesn't just make us lazy and complacent and careless in our Christianity. That goes directly against what God's will for us as his people is. That makes it sin. Sin, as all sin is, which is punishable before God with death. Just reminds us, God never promised that this congregation wouldn't fail. He promised the Holy Christian Church, that church with a capital C, would never fall. But he never promised St. Paul's in North Mankato would never fail. It's a blessing of his grace that for 100 years God has has continued to allow a place where you can hear his word taught in the truth and purity and where you can gather to worship him. But the success of the past doesn't guarantee success in the future. This service today only reminds us of how determined we need to be in carrying that mission forward for the next 100 years. We're thankful that Jesus when he came into this world, never became lazy or complacent or careless or lost sight of his mission. Instead, he was laser-focused on that mission, living the perfect life that you and I can, taking that to Calvary's cross where he willingly suffered the hell that you and I deserve, and then rising from the grave to free us from the guilt and the shame of our sins and to give us the certainty of eternal life. That's the joy of the gospel message. Jesus died for all of your sins. He freed you from slavery to the devil and guaranteed you the certainty of eternal life. God did that not only so that you would live with him for heaven, but so that you would serve him now. He did that so you would have a message that you could take to the world and share with them. You see, you know firsthand the grace and the power of God in your life. Through that faith, he worked in you by the Holy Spirit. You have a message, a story, that you can bring to those in your neighborhood, in your city, at work. And you just never know whose heart that gospel message is going to touch. I learned recently that a member of mine from Tampa died suddenly of a massive heart attack at age 53. Six, seven years ago, John didn't really know Jesus. He certainly had no certainty of forgiveness of sins and the salvation Jesus offered. What he needed was a private school for his son. And so he enrolled Jack in our school. And as we got to know John, John started coming to church slowly at first, but more regularly after a while. Over the years, I talked with John. He eventually came into Bible information class and I heard his confession of faith in Jesus as his Savior as he stood before God's altar at his adult confirmation. John shared with me the certainty that he had in salvation, the joy of forgiveness through Jesus. None of us at the time knew how little time John had left on this earth. Yet John is in heaven today because we were focused on reaching out. This this time through our school. 
focused on proclaiming the message of Jesus to souls who needed to hear it. You have those same opportunities before you right here. Not only is it good to give thanks for the past, it's even more important to keep that mission in front of you as you seek to proclaim God's message to this world. Just think what great things God could do for his kingdom if every one of God's people here were using their time, their talents, and their treasures to the very best of their abilities. What's your part in that mission? What role are you going to play in carrying that mission out? How are you in your life going to carry out that mission? God brought you all together from various places, with various backgrounds, with various interests, talents, and abilities. And don't think that happened by accident. God doesn't work haphazardly. He sits on heaven's throne, guiding and ruling the affairs of this world for the good of his people. That means he brought you together at this place, at this time, for this purpose. To make an impact for his kingdom and this community. And through the proclamation of his word, win more souls for him. So we give thanks. We give thanks for the faithful pastors and teachers who have served you over 100 years. We give thanks for the faithful, hard-working, dedicated lay leaders who've sacrificed so much time and energy and money to support and carry out the ministry of this congregation. We give thanks for the thousands of lives, yea, thousands of eternities that were touched through the work of this congregation. I give thanks for the years that I was able to serve here and work alongside of you in carrying out this gospel work. But now we look to the future. Now we look for the opportunities that continue to lay in front of us. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't glory in the success of the past. Keep your eyes looking forward to the opportunities in front of you. Be active. Pursue those opportunities with all the zeal that God could give. Just wonder what what will happen in the next 150 or, or, or 200 years. What blessings God will continue to bestow on you. Keep asking yourself that question. Where will we go from here? Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now have opportunity to make confession of our faith. We do that today using the explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. Join with me. I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ, this is most certainly true. You may be seated. At this time, we'll continue with our offering. One of the ways that we can give thanks to God for his amazing grace and also to plan to continue to carry out his mission into the future. During this time, there are extra pens in the side aisles in the leather books. Please fill out that blue connection card. Place that in the offering plate. And uh, during the, the passing of the offering plates, we will join together in singing the offering hymn. The words and music are found on page 10, and they'll be on the screen. For many years, O God of grace.
Yes. Christian conviction, and whose diligent effort and financial sacrifice resulted in the formation of this congregation, we thank you, Lord. for those who labored with mind and hand to design and construct this sanctuary, that the people of God might worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, we thank you, Lord. for all those ministers of the gospel who have led your people in worship here throughout the past 100 years, who have preached your word from the pulpit, and who have administered the sacraments to waiting and believing hearts. We thank you, Lord. For those who founded our schools, Risen Savior Lutheran School and Jesus Loves Me Learning Center, for teachers who instructed young souls in the wonders of God's creation and the message of salvation, and for the students who grew in the grace and knowledge of their Savior, we thank you, Lord. For those who have brought their children here for baptism, for those who have pledged their love to one another at this altar, and for those who in Christian faith and trust have parted with loved ones and committed them to your grace. We thank you, Lord. For all those who have here confessed their faith in Jesus Christ and have shared in the life and witness of the church. We thank you, Lord. For the sins that have con been confessed and forgiven here. For the burdens that have been made easier to carry. For the distressed and troubled hearts that have known the peace that passes all understanding. And for lives that have been inspired to new heights of love and service. We thank you, Lord. For our fellowship in the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. For the opportunity to support Christian education of teenagers at Minnesota Valley Lutheran High School, and for the privilege of enriching the education of students at Martin Luther College and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. We thank, thank you, Lord. For all who have come to this place seeking your mercy and finding peace in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Lord God, you have graciously blessed this congregation of believers for the past 100 years. Be with us in the future as you have in the past, that with faithful hearts we may receive your grace, rejoice in your salvation, serve you with cheerful hearts, confess your name in this community, and finally praise you together with your whole church when your Son returns and bestows on us the crown of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear us, gracious Lord, as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
You may be seated. wonderful celebration. Thanks be to God for his grace. I would invite you all to hang around in between services. We have lots of donuts and coffee and juice, so talk to each other, spend this time together. Um, after, after this time of fellowship, we'll also assemble back in here. Pastor Van Evenoven, thank you so much for being here today. He'll give some updates about his ministry, a chance to ask him some questions, give some advice for our our future as well, uh, while we pass the time together between the start of our next service. Um, at this point, I'm going to pause. I believe that um, staff minister Nate Voss has a video announcement for us that is pretty special, so we'll enjoy that together. Welcome. What a blessing it is to be here for St. Paul's Lutheran Ministry for one 
100 years of God's grace. We have beautiful skies, we have great green grass growing, and we have an amazing church building. I'm here to tell you that as of today, our mortgage is paid off. What a blessing. Woo! And we wanted to raise $336,000 to pay off our mortgage. We had volunteers that called to set up everything. We had people that prayed for the ministry here at St. Paul's. And we also had many, many people that gave both big and small gifts. And those were amazing blessings to the Lord. Because of that, our mortgage is paid off. Because of that, this lace statement that I have in front of me says, mortgage paid in full. What a blessing. What a blessing to have so many people here at St. Paul's who love the Lord, serve the Lord, seek the Lord, worship the Lord. We are blessed. What can we do with this in our next 100 years? I hope that you're a part of it. And for those of you who are new here, we want you to stick with us. Let us know what we can do to help you. But today I have the mortgage. And I want to do something very special with the mortgage. Something that we wanted to do for a while. First of all, I'm going to rip it. Because we no longer have a mortgage. And then I'm going to commit it to the Lord. Let's see if we can light this on fire. <laughs> If the wind allows us to do it. It's a fragrant offering to the Lord. What a blessing. Let's see what our next 100 years entails. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. times. We, we thought maybe, maybe in three years we'd be able to do that, and in just over, just over a year, maybe a year and a half, taken care of. God, oh, thank, thank you for your blessings. Um, one, I guess just one more announcement. I, I want to invite, uh, especially those who have signed up for the, the meal at noon, to come back and join us for that. Um, I've been told that there were a couple people who were not able to make it to help out, so we still need two to three people to help simply scoop food onto plates. You don't have to serve anything, but if we could get two or three people to help scoop food onto plates, just let me know on your way out if you'd be willing to do that and then, and then come back uh, at, at noon to be able to help do that. That would help immensely. Um, those are my announcements. Thank you to everybody who worked so hard to make this possible. Let's, let's um, give thanks to God and also thank, thank him for God's people who helped with the service today. <laughs> Pastor Van Evenoven and I look forward to greeting you in the entryway of the church. But before you come out and greet us, look right, left, forward, and backwards, and say hi to the people who worshiped with you today.